let's sort out your personal finances. Doctor joining me now is Dr. Roger Givob. He's CEO of Fair Money, personal finance and credit expert. Um, he loves a bit of a froth and he joins me now. Uh, Roger, hello. Good morning. So, um, we have uh, discussions going on at the top of our government about who's going to lead our government and going to be Prime Minister. Um, I'm not sure that either Liz Truss or Rishi Sunak has quite grasped how serious and how difficult this cost of living crisis actually is to deal with and navigate. Totally. I mean, you're absolutely right that you can sit in, in the studio there and lots of other people can sit in privileged, if you will, places or situations and yet still understand comments by the, the lovely lady that uh, just spoke to you at length. For some reason, uh, the politicians, so many of them who, who, who inhabit the Westminster bubble, cloud, whatever, just can't seem to grasp it. I don't know about you, but I also could faint if I have to watch any more politicians dissemble and dodge issues and questions. It's a real shame that the brilliant Kate McCann was briefly taken ill uh, during the debate uh, the other day um, with Rishi Sunak, when both she and Talk TV were doing so well, so much better than the previous debates that had happened. And when she probably would have actually been able, with her skill, to dig some real answers out of those people uh, who just kept ducking and diving. For me, watching those candidates, James, was like drowning in blamange. The, the generalizations, the platitudes, the evasions, the hesitancy to answer the most simple questions never ceased. But also, it's, it's, it is, you know, it is quite interesting that you have this situation that they refuse to um, pinpoint particular policies that they're going to follow. Uh, we are hoping that they, uh, both of those candidates, are going to agree to a, uh, whether it's a rematch or however you want to call it. I know that uh, Kate and the team are pushing for it, uh, and it was great to see her back on our screens. Uh, look, we, if you were Chancellor or if you were one of these two and you really wanted to push forward a policy or something that would make a tangible difference, what would it be? Well, I keep saying the same thing on this and other programs over and over for the last a month or two. Number one, take the interest rates back down where they were. We're in cost push inflation. We have inflation because of the price of raw materials, now, not people I, overspending. I understand that. But how are you going to do that if you have the U.S., which continues to push up its interest rate, not in our control, and therefore their currency is strengthened? If you don't strengthen our currency, then you have a relative weakness and therefore you have inflationary pressure. So we are almost being forced into this position because of what the US is doing, combined with the fact that if you have a look at the Big Mac index, and I know that people might um, you know, raise their eyebrows that you consider it, but the Economist back in 1986, they did a relative index of Big Mac prices. The UK is undervalued in terms of its Big Mac pricing by 13%, i.e. our currency is out of kilt. Uh, out of kilt. Yes. And therefore, if we don't raise interest rates too, our currency becomes even less valuable, inflation comes it's a it's a trade-off james the people i don't recall her name but the lady who just spoke to you isn't yeah. using do, isn't using dollars okay it's a trade-off between people starving between not knowing what to do yes uh and 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 you know being able to at least survive now well you say US, she's not using dollars but actually if she is buying anything that is uh, originally coming from the United States or dollar denominated or an American company, she is. She is, but that's a small portion of her purchases. She's not buying oil and gas and energy and petrol from the United States so much. The point I'm trying to make is the Federal Reserve raised the rates uh, yesterday by another 75 basis points, three quarters of a percent. That's the fourth time in, in recent. They have got a completely different scenario. They do have consumer spending running fast and driving up inflation. We don't. It's also the main thing that drove them is the technicalities in the bond markets there. The, the usual things they measure to see whether they should raise interest rates have to do with their own bond markets. They're not applicable here. The thing I think is really funny and great is that the last statement from the Fed is that, well, you know, we've done this four times. I just love the way politicians and bureaucrats do things just for the sake of doing them. We've done this four times, but it hasn't worked yet. Nothing's happened. Well, we're not meeting again until September, and then we'll see if it's working. Now, should this great nation actually follow somebody lemming-like 
that is, you know, is, is trying that on to see if it works? No, I don't think so. That's number one, interest rates. Number two, petrol. I find it incredible that in all the debates that we've heard, James, the word has not been mentioned once. You talk about not living in the real world. Do these folks, do these future prime ministers of ours not remember the motorway blockades a few weeks ago where people were so angry they actually blocked the motorways? They never mentioned petrol. Get the VAT off petrol. It's, well, it's a not tax just the VAT. On tax on tax. Well, exactly, tax on tax on tax. But we also know yeah. that so uh, petrol prices, uh, you know, petrol, petrol prices, uh, that, 80p uh, of the cost of a litre is, um, totally, uh, you know, totally. is, is, the, is the cost. Yeah. And then the rest of it is is tax and, and profits. Absolutely. Tax on tax on tax. Get Get that off. Number three. Get the VAT off home energy prices. Uh, home energy, uh, 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 yeah, home energy prices. Uh, number four, shift the green levy. As you say, things like climate change and culture wars and all—they're terribly important. But they've got to take a bit of a backseat. Shift that green energy levy to the windfall tax. Let the energy companies pay it. Don't burden us with it. And on and on and on. There are five or six simple things that not only could be done and haven't been. They haven't even been mentioned in the debates. Kate was the first one of all the debates I mean, that was starting to get into it. Sec secondly, if I can just finish, Talk TV, to its credit, didn't have a giant audience full of conservatives. It had a small group of people from all different persuasions, and they asked real questions. There were three real questions. First, the poor gentleman who had cancer says he couldn't get the help he needed from the NHS. Secondly, the lovely lady said she can't buy meat for her family every day as she used to. They're going to go veggie. And thirdly, the gentleman who said, I don't know what I'm going to do about my winter fuel bill. That was before consultancies announced that due to the Russians cutting off German gas even further yesterday, our energy bills are going to be 4000 Neither Liz nor Rishi answered any of those real questions. It and, was just waffle about what they were going to nor do. Nor will they, Roger. So keep nor frothing. They. they never will. Nor they will won't they. answer those questions because, uh, for whatever reason, uh, they don't want to face the reality of what's going on. However, that's why you and I have our conversations. That's why you and I froth. There we are, Dr. Roger Givob, CEO of Fair Money, personal finance and credit expert. Thank you so much for joining me this morning here.